Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Craft Room. And on today's video, I have here this pattern, Maple and Eucalyptus by Gnome Angel and Karen Brown. And this is the pattern that we're gonna use for this year's 100 block fusion sampler. Oh, there's a bonus layout. So this quilt comes with the bonus expansion pack option, which I surely did download. It's called Bonkers. And we are bonkers at Dave's craft room, so I almost feel like I have no choice other than to make the bonkers quilt. And all you do is make multiple of your quilt blocks. Oh man, that's a lot of work. There's like 500 blocks. There's 503 blocks in this. This quilt is so epic though. I almost feel like I can't not do it. Well, I'm not filming a new intro, so you might see a new, <laughs> a recycled intro. I am also gonna do the bonkers layout. I think Karen made this one. Yes, quilt design Karen Brown. I love it. I, I literally can't not do this and it's actually easy. All you do is make multiple of each block. So you're making one already. Now you just make, you know, whatever it calls for. There's a list here of what it calls for. And then there's assembly diagrams for each different section. Oh, there's a coloring page. I'm not gonna sit there and color it every tiny little block of that coloring page, but I'm glad they have it for people who do all that. No, cause I'm gonna, mine's gonna be improvised. Oh, this is gonna be a lot of work, but um, we're gonna use Mount Scrap more. Something has gotta give with her because she's just getting way too big and I, every idea can't be a scrap quilt. This will be a scrap quilt kind of, but it won't be like a crazy quilt. So let's get started. Okay, construction details. Oh, these are the measurements, okay. Okay, so this is block number one. So for the regular quote, I need one, and for the bonkers quote, I need two. Greetings all, and welcome to Dave's Craft Room. And on today's video, I have here pizza delivery for Dave, two large pizzas. These are the 500 or so quilt blocks from the 100 days, 100 blocks challenge, maple and eucalyptus bonkers layout. And you should have seen last week's video where I did just the one block per each standard layout, I guess. As I was piecing those blocks, I realized that it would be fastest having already decided that I was gonna do the bonkers one as well, it would be fastest to cut and sew these at the same time so that I could chain piece them together and be done with it. But however, that being said, the true T is I did not have time to do all of them. And so in the situations where I was falling behind or I needed to catch up, these fell by the wayside a little bit and there's like 10 or so, 10 to 15 or something, blocks that are not done. So it's not 100% done, it's like 96% done or something. For whatever reason, I have not been able to find the motivation to do those remaining blocks. There's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, nine sets of blocks that are not done. So I guess that would be 91%. But anyway, I haven't been able to find the motivation to do it. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this up on the design wall and I'm going to piece the missing blocks as their gap becomes apparent. I guess it's the conventional wisdom that you do all the prep work and then you do the quilt, you sew it together. That's not how I work because I, I would rather kind of do everything all at once. It may not be the fastest way, but breaking it up and doing various different things is more entertaining for me. So that's how I like to do it. As I pieced the blocks, I checked them off with the blue um, highlighter. I mean, it's digital, but, and uh, so I can see the ones that are missing. And then it's put together in quadrants, A, B, C, and D. You sew A together and then B together, C and then D, and then you sew A to B and C to D, and then you sew A, B, and CD together, and that's your quilt. So let's go ahead and start by uh, doing section A. You won't be able to see this. I, I don't think you can probably see it from there. 
I don't think I can probably put the actual pattern up on the screen because I bought it, so um, if you want to see it, you probably have to buy it. But, I mean, you'll see the finished quilt soon enough anyway. So, let's do that. This is going to be a challenge because there are a gazillion blocks. I think this is 1 to 50, and this is 50 to 100. These are document cases, by the way. These are meant for documents. I got these at the dollar store, and uh, they're good for quilt blocks. These are the big ones. There's also small ones that you could put A4 paper in. So let's do it. Uh, where to even start? I guess I'm going to start by changing the camera angle. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is section A. 
So this is only one quarter of the quilt. Matter of fact, no, it's actually less than that because sections B and C are bigger than section A and then section D is smaller, but so <laughs> this is already such a monstrosity and we're going to quadruple it. Do all the points line up and not get cut off? No. Do all the colors match instead of clash? No. Did everything line up according to the pattern? Absolutely not. We had to fudge many things, but you know what? We fudge. I love it, but it is a full monstrosity. All right, that's it for tonight. We're gonna start section B tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, section B, which is even, it's just as long, but it's wider. This will not fit on my design wall for sure. All right, section B is done. See how section B is bigger than section A? I now I have to take this off because there's no room to put section C on here even. All right, let's put this to the side and start section C. I have all my quilt blocks strewn across the floor in order. Of course, they've fallen out of order now, but they're supposed to be in order.
If you're new to Dave's Craft Room, welcome. I bring new quilt videos every other Tuesday, and if you don't want to miss them, please subscribe to my channel. Now I have to iron it. Oh, this is gonna be made to iron. Just cause it's so long. There's just no way for me to make sure all the seams are going exactly the way I want. We have to liberate ourselves from <laughs> perfection here because there's gonna be some extra bulk in some places because of the way the seams had to go. It's just too much to do otherwise, you know what I mean? And some of the blocks were ironed with the seams open, others were not. And then you have to put them beside blocks where you didn't plan what you were going to do. So it just is what it is. Everything will get quilted down and it'll buff. Okay, um, I'm ironing this right now. I'm not going to um, put it back up on the design wall because it's too big to even fit. What I'm going to do next is... This is another situation where I have to clear out the living room furniture and rug. And uh, I'm gonna use a king sheet, king size bed sheet for the backing. That's not necessarily the most conducive thing to use for a backing. I'm going to do it though, because I, I don't have any other fabric big enough or, you know, and I don't wanna sit here and piece a backing that's that big, so. I'm just gonna use a sheet. And for the quilting, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put some ties in it. The ties are gonna stay in forever, but they're also gonna be basting for, I'm then gonna go through and machine quilt and just do some other quilting. It's gonna be so random. It's gonna be a combination of methods. And that's that. So I'm now at the final step of ironing this. So I'm now gonna go down and clear out my living room rug and furniture so I can lay it out. I hope this even fits laid out on the floor like that. Greetings all and welcome to Dave's Chaos Land. We are citizens of Chaos Land on this day, on this quilt that I sit on. Let me try to explain what is taking place. 
Basically, this quilt is so big that every individual step takes so long that I get sick of doing it. And so the solution is I'm kind of doing every step out of order and I'll do one for a period until I get sick of it and then I move on. That's kind of why you can see like here the batting is already trimmed away. You generally do that at the end, but I just, and you know, the we're finishing the binding on that side even before it's quilted, which is, I know that's unorthodox. I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, what's the next thought? Okay. Oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind. Okay, the, the batting. That's a king size cotton batting that um, is actually fusible. But however, again, the sheer size of it, I'm not gonna sit here with my iron and iron over the whole thing. I do not have time and I just don't feel like doing it. We're on the floor and the floor is flat and that's just gonna keep it flat while I work on it like this. While I tie it with a quilt this big, we need all the help we can get to keep these layers together and to keep everything quilted down. I think this is the move to add these ties to consider them basting and then to add quilting on top of that, not on top per se, but add quilting to the quilt as well. And then the ties stay in and add interest. <laughs> I'm sorry. The thought of adding interest to this quilt. This yarn right here is hand dyed. I bought this online from an Instagram account that I'm a fan of. And <laughs> on that note, I, if I recall correctly, it did come with a warning that's saying, this is hand dyed yarn. So it's possible that it could bleed. Be conscientious of that. We are in chaos land. We are fully in chaos land, look around. So uh, that's fine, let the colors bleed and it, it'll be fine. I originally watched a video by Donna Jordan on how to tie a quilt. You can go to Donna Jordan's channel and watch uh, that video. But legitimately there's nothing to it. You're, you're just taking a little stitch through, come up and tie a double knot. That's legitimately all there is to it. Um, there's not a special technique that you have to learn. I, I don't know the technical name for that type of knot. It's just a knot. Some people put, I forget what that glue is called on there. Uh, I don't do all that. I've never had a, them come undone, so I don't feel the need to put glue or whatever on there. This quilt, I mean, let's just be honest. It's, there was a lot of fudging happening. That's just the way it is. All the blocks, I mean, you have to think in blocks made of all these different fabrics and all different shapes and sizes and all that, they're not gonna all come out perfect. We have to fudge. And on, when you fudge on this large of a scale, there's gonna be parts like this part right here, I don't know if you can see on camera, and this part too is, is like a little bit gathery. Whereas in other sections like around here, it's pretty tight. There's only so much I can do, on, you know, on the floor. I don't have the big like pipes of the long arm Thing that um, long armors have. Even then, I'm not sure that this would fit on some long arm. You would need a long arm that has really long, I don't know what they're called, like those racks that you roll the quilt up on. Um, they would have to be quite long for this quilt. At the end of the day, it's fabric, you know what I mean? Like, it'll buff.
So this is the final result. It is a full scale king size quilted monstrosity with over 500 blocks. Bonkers is the only word you could use to describe it. So thank you for coming to Dave's Craft Room. Remember to like and subscribe to my channel and please come again.